Okay, thank you so much. Nope, that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Okay, so my portfolio is gone. It's deleted. morning so today we're gonna work on my portfolio and i'm starting from complete scratch and that's because my old portfolio is gone it's deleted i lost everything i need to put some makeup on this face and get a little bit more polished up so let's do a little bit of a story time of why my old portfolio is completely gone all right let's get started and because i wasn't looking for a new job and because i wasn't working on my portfolio i just kind of forgot to pay for my site a lot of my credit cards had already expired so like i didn't really have like auto pay set up either i'll call them eventually like this is classic me procrastinating and they were like oh uh you haven't paid it in like a year <laughs> such a dumb dumb and then of course they were like well we can't restore your information our, on our end, but your actual like website hosting platform can, one where I actually like build my website on. I accidentally also forgot to pay for that too. So, like we can't restore your stuff after it's gone after a certain amount of time, which so I kind of just took it as a sign. The universe saying, hey Mimi, we're gonna delete all your stuff and you're gonna figure it out and you're gonna go through a new resurgence, phoenix, caterpillar to butterfly, moment. So today I thought I'd take you through the process of going through my portfolio from scratch. Like you're gonna see where it takes us because I highly doubt I can get this done in a day. I'm not even looking for a new job but I feel like at this point I just need to carve out time to actually work on it. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start working on my brand. This is the hardest part for me. I actually can't stand doing this, I won't lie, because I'm not a visual designer, I'm not a graphic designer, it's just not my thing. So when I'm looking for inspiration and I'm going on Pinterest or if I'm going on awards or looking at any type of website design in general, I'm trying to be as realistic as possible to be like, girl, humble yourself and make sure you actually can design something within your boundaries and your skills. I think that's where a lot of people get caught up with their portfolios. They're like, this website represents me as a person. Like, obviously you want that to be perfect, but none of us are perfect. But I won't lie, this is very hard for me because I did work at some agencies like early on in my career, but I work at a CRM company. I work for software. Like I'm having a very hard time. I'm getting overwhelmed. Let's just see what I've come up with so far, but please don't judge my designs, okay? We listen and we don't judge. We listen and we don't judge. I started going for more of like an editorial version, very brat summer of me, but it felt too on trend. So then I started playing around with this version, which I really like. And if anyone's familiar with Brooklinen, which has the best sheets ever, this is not sponsored. I literally just love their sheets. I kind of like the look and feel of the color palette. It's like this navy on cream, mostly concerned about contrast and accessibility. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a plug-in on this. I have a plug-in here for Figma for color contrast. Let's give myself a time box of maybe 20 minutes. I really don't wanna spend any more time on the brand. This could go on forever. We can go on until I die of trying to figure out what my brand is. like hero section and video because I am a YouTuber. So like, why not tell my story through video? That is obviously putting more work on my plate. I changed the font from italics. I just thought it looked a little bit more cleaner. Kind of starting to think I like this idea of potentially this scrolling 
through past the screen would be neat if I could find a way to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is move on to the home page here and I'll create, I started creating components too, like this navigation is its own components. So I am starting to componentize a lot of my patterns, but I always tend to do that at the very end. So we'll see how that goes, which isn't the smartest thing to do. So I have different case studies today. So we're gonna start plugging those in and seeing what it looks like with the new branding. So I've run into a little bit of a problem. I'm just not loving how it looks. Like if I take this grid off, the font is just so heavy. Everything looks very jarring and intense and it's just not giving what I want. I just don't know what it is. It's so weird. It's like an intuition thing. Actually go back to good old pen and paper. So I first mapped out what my portfolio looks like today. And then I started thinking about what's really important for the homepage to have. Like, again, who is this for? This is for a hiring recruiter. This is for a manager, um, someone who understands design. And what I realized is I always wanted to know, like, why should I be looking at your portfolio? Why should I be clicking on your thing? So then I came up with this concept of like, let's tell whoever's here why they should click on which case study. So I kind of came up with this like, this is best for who kind of scenario. So I wanna center a lot around that for each of the case studies. Let's go back in and try and clean this up a bit. And I'm basically just gonna, just gonna tighten it all up, tighten it all up. So see how I have this in like a frame almost? I'm wondering to keep my designs contained, I can put the case studies inside of like a little frame. So I'm gonna try and go pull some of those assets right now and see if I can put them in like a more polished look. house for each of my case study images. I've applied it. I'm going to do three case studies. If you haven't seen my video about portfolios, highly recommend you watch it. I'll put it up, link it up on the screen again. I like to stick with three. I never go exceed more than three. I just think it's highly unlikely that a hiring manager or recruiting person will actually look at all those case studies. And also that's just so much more work on me that I don't really need in my life. I basically created these as placeholder mocks just to see what this vibe might look like. Something might be helpful is I'm going going to add in here some type of this project I want to say like this is best for love like redesigns and should we go to chat GPT I think like we should do that about this case study is best this particular project is for CRM I did use a lot of data for this and then this actually is my favorite project out of the three that I'm going to put in here so let's continue to put in the rest of the case studies I'm hoping that again with whatever website builder that I choose like maybe we can make this fun I don't know how and again like I suck at animation so we'll see and then I also need to find a way to add the orbs in here without it manipulating the image here so I'm probably gonna have to make sure this goes in the back but it's still showing so I'm gonna have to add a fill I don't think my frames have a fill in here right now yeah there you go um, and I also made a color palette already, which is so helpful. So then since I already know the background's cream, I already created like a style guide for that. But I also want to add like testimonials. I have been a UX designer now for almost, I don't know, six years. So I have collected some feedback in the past that might help me gain a little bit more credibility in the game. And so let's add like a section here. I don't know what to like title it quite yet. Start to play around with that. I need to go collect them. They're actually, I think they're on my LinkedIn or I've just gotten them in the past from like feedback. Taking a little break because I realized I should really figure out what website builder I'm using. I'm starting to think that depending on what the capabilities are, what if my design thinking changes? Like what if some of my decisions that I'm making heavily rely on what the builder can do? Eee! 
I've been eyeing a few different builders. So the builder that I had before, again, I'm not gonna name it cause like no shade, I still loved it. I just want something different. I have a feeling I'm gonna go with Framer. Mainly because of the ease between Figma and Framer. I just find that so simple. Before I go down the rabbit hole of actually building out each case study because in my opinion, that's the biggest piece when you're creating your portfolio is actually designing each of the case studies themselves. I'm gonna put the homepage inside Framer and see what kind of capabilities there. I think it's about time to come out of my dark den and get some food. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna hang out outside, but stick around because I want you to see if I can add any fun stuff to my website because I just feel like it's very static and boring right now. So stay tuned. We got my portfolio on Framer and it was really easy to do. I literally installed a plugin and just copied and pasted my design into Framer. As I preview it on Framer as if it was a real interactable website, I realized that it does look a little flat. I feel like this tends to happen a lot in design where you're in Figma and you're kind of in tunnel vision and then until you kind of get it on a URL or in a more interactable prototype, you're like, ooh, this looks a little boring and it could use a little bit more depth. So I'm gonna try spicing it up a little bit with what Framer has to offer. I've been perusing their effects and motions and trying to see like how it can fit into my designs. And again, I'm so thankful for that because I am not an animations girly. I'm a very static girl. I like to stay still. So I like that someone else is gonna do the work for me. So let's get into it. Let's first start with the header and the hero section here. This is truly the first impression or like the entry point to my portfolio. Portfolio. So when it loads, I want to add some animation. So I'm going to go into effects here and do a fade in and preview it, see how it feels. I feel like it could use a little bit more in terms of like the time, the delay, the bounce, tweak it a little bit and see if that looks any better. So I'm going to preview that. Okay, I feel like that looks a lot better. Now remember the headers in each of the case studies. Let's play around with something I found called the ticker. So I'm going to make this text a stack so that I can connect it to the ticker effect. So I'm gonna put it off to the side here, add it as a stack, and then I'm going to insert the ticker effect. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit so it fits nicely and snug. And then after I do that, I'm going to take the points and I'm going to connect it to that text that I put off to the side earlier. And then I should be good. Okay, I feel like this is already in a really good place. Like I already got some depth in here with the header. I added this as a ticker. I just need to add it to the rest of the case studies, but I feel really comfortable moving on to the other parts of my portfolio. I believe we've reached the end of the line. I don't have any more time to work on this. I honestly don't want to work on it. And I think when you're working on your portfolio, you have to give yourself some grace and tell yourself it's okay. There's another day. I'm not on a time crunch by any means because I'm not looking for a new job. So this is really more of a pet project at this point. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go take a nap. I'm going to do whatever I want. If you want any more videos about work on your portfolio or how to become a UX designer, make sure you watch these videos next and I will see you guys next time.